when I'm at a party or something like that and people come up to me and say, oh, so what do you do? I, I usually just say, I make neon. That's what we do here, we make neon. When I began doing this, which was basically early 80s, that was a very particular time where neon had more or less died. And I think a lot of us brought a new energy to it. And a lot of it was at the benefit of very generous, older generation neon people who came from a world of protective guild mentality. And I think they were very concerned with preserving the art as well. That combination of being mentored by vendors from the prior era and kind of this new energy in the late 70s and early 80s brought about a lot of innovations. Then uh, in the 90s, with, with the advent of the internet, several of us started communicating online and sharing knowledge and sharing ideas. And I can't even begin to say how many things I've learned from my contemporaries from all over the world. We do a lot of work with theater, film, and TV. It's hard to say which came first um, because I probably did my first theater piece a long, long, long time ago uh, for the City Opera. Uh, this past year, we've done a lot of film. Now that Netflix is doing its own production and Amazon is doing its own production, so kind of the video world is, is, has exploded and they all are realizing how great Neon looks. For most Neon, the template is flat. And typically, if we're doing words, the template is actually reversed because we want to be able to have the face of the sign be flat and in the same plane. And all the bends are going to, that connect the letters are going to be behind each letter. We usually put a, a metal screen over it, which helps protect it from the heat of the glass. We'll pull out sticks of glass, and then we'll proceed to figure out which might be the first bend. We might use the ribbon burner if it's going to be a curve. And typically we're going back and forth between the different burners. And once in a while we might use the hand torch to either fuse something together or do something that's difficult to do holding it in, in my hands. There's something freewheeling and freeform about it where you really, it's a judgment call. How much glass, how long do I heat it? You know, what point do I start to bend it? Where do I stop? Where do I continue to the next bend? What do I do first? Then there are those times where you're just in the flow. You're really in the groove. And it's almost like the glass is just doing it itself. You just happen to be there and you're helping keeping it from falling on the ground. But otherwise the glass, the flame and yourself are just in the groove and you're just cruising along. And I, I love those days. It, it's kind of what I got into this for was just to be in that state. Yeah.